Welcome to the community time with Katie and Sam. <laughs> I am so happy. Welcome, everybody. Um, I usually start the stream a little bit early so that it gives people time to come in. But this time I was like so punctual, it might be to a fault. <laughs> All good, all good, Katie. Good new ha good habits to start with the new year, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, welcome everyone to community time. I'm Katie, the technical community manager at Circle CI, and right now we are featuring some of our really amazing uh, Circle CI employees, what they're good at, and um, so today I want to introduce Sam Olukotun. How did I do? Pretty good. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll, I'll keep practicing. Um, Sam, do you want to introduce us? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure thing. Thank you, Katie. It's a pleasure to be here. As Katie mentioned, my name is Sam. I am a solutions engineer here at Circle CI. I have been here a little over a year and a half. And before joining, I was working as a full stack engineer. That was where I actually got exposure to Circle CI as a product. And so that really fuels a lot of the excitement I bring to my role as a solutions engineer when talking to customers because I really feel their pain. I've been there before, I've done that, and I use Circle CI to solve a lot of that. So it's just an exciting place for me to be right now. So just kind of the perfect alignment of the stars for you exactly. to come be a solutions engineer. Right, yes. I go on those calls and sometimes I feel like, hey, I'm an evangelist and I'm here just preaching the gospel of a product that I really, really, really like. <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the best like scenario, right? Of course. You know how they say, if you're having fun, you're not working a day in your life, right? So just <laughs> a product that you really legitimately enjoy working with and you have teammates who are just a pleasure to be on calls with. It's, it's a delight. Yeah. So, okay. Can you tell me and and whoever's watching, what exactly is a solutions engineer? Ah, great question. I should probably have described that earlier. That's okay. That's what I'm here. I'm here to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> so a solutions engineer at Circle CI, you can think of us as a counterpart to the sales team. So we're typically engineers with back technical backgrounds and we help the business team engage in technical conversations with the customers. So usually the customers might have specific technical questions they have. They might have a tool chain they're trying to integrate Circle CI with, or they might want to see a demo, just get a feel for what the platform looks like. So that's where me and my team will come in. We show them what Circle CI looks like. We show them the features. We help them integrate with any endpoints they might have or any APIs they might be trying to work with. So that's what I do here as a solutions engineer. So you just solve problems. Pretty much, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've always found that that sort of work, um, it feels like you have to know a lot about a lot of different things because mm -hmm. you're not just an expert in like Circle CI, right? Because mostly people are like integrating it into lots of other platforms. So do you find that you have to also kind of like uh, put on a lot of different hats and be an expert in lots of other technologies? Oh yes, certainly. The role by default, just expose you to a lot of technologies that customers are working with. Because at Circle CI, our platform itself is non-opinionated. We let you bring any framework, any tool chain you're working with and integrate it with our platform. So by reason of that flexibility, as solutions engineers, as a company, we're just exposed to all, just the breadth of the ecosystem that we support and that we enable. And for that reason, we're constantly, as solutions engineers, picking up new technologies, continuous development, continuous education. It's one of the key <laughs> things. Well, yeah, continuous. Oh, look at that, CICD. You that did it. In there. <laughs> You're adding CE, continuous education. Continuous education, yep. <laughs> so that's it, Circle CI, the platform for all your needs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we would pay for commercials when we have you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I've got a job as a solutions engineer, Katie. I can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so was it a natural like so you were a full stack developer before using circle ci but this is a different kind of like role do you think was it was it an easy jump for you to say like oh, i'll be a solutions engineer because i mean in some ways when you're working as a developer you're not not a solutions engineer do you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah you raise an interesting point there where you say was it easy definitely not it's different <laughs> I found that software developing development is a different kind of challenge versus talking to customers. 
And for me, while I was working as a full stack engineer, part of what motivated that drive to explore solutions engineering was at my last company, I got a chance to serve as a technical product owner. And so during that experience, I got this exposure to the customer concerns of why do they want to use our products and what pain points are we building those products to solve? Mm. So this is a team of about 12 engineers split up into three teams. So all of us wore multiple hats. So there I was acting as a technical product owner and also still writing full stack code for the platform as well. So that gave me this interesting blend of, okay, we're solving technical challenges. We're trying to fix bugs and push features, but tomorrow I need to go talk to the customer that we're building this for and actually ask them, is this addressing your pain point? Yeah. So that combination of technical and customer interaction that got me interested in solutions engineering. And I have to say that transition from technical to a business mindset, it's been a difficult one, but I'm glad it's one that Circle CI and my teammates have been around to help me through. Yeah, that's really amazing. I think that um, I had a tiny bit of experience with like consultancies where, mm -hmm. you know, the developers are constantly talking to the clients. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I first saw like a product shop, I was like, well, how do they know what the people want? You know, <laughs> and I think it's just two very different mindsets and there's processes for each, but I sort of like the you can sit nicely in the middle in, in your role. Exactly. And that's what I would say has been the real joy for me in solutions engineering is that I can take advantage of my technical training and also I get to talk to wonderful people all day. So it's just. Yeah. It's <laughs> so, so far, what has been the most exciting part of like becoming a solutions engineer? Ooh, the most exciting part. I would say it's been learning to phrase features and engineering products in terms of business value. Because okay. up to this point, I've always been about, let's go learn this technical framework and let's go build this really cool feature. Yeah. But now I've learned that the feature, no matter how cool it is, no matter how exciting it is to work on it as an engineer, if it's not solving a pain for a customer, if you're not helping a customer move faster or do anything better, all you've done is just a fun side project that you're not going to sell. So <laughs> I think the fun part for me has been making that mind shift change and all the new cognitive models it's kind of unlocked for me. It's been an exciting learning process. Yeah, it has to be exciting to build, but it also be has to be exciting to receive for the customer. You've got it, exactly. Build like something that. wonderful to build, but also that customers are super excited to talk about, yes. Yeah, I think, I think you could make them excited about any feature. <laughs> 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 so you were familiar with CircleCI. You were using it a lot before you came here. And I know you liked the product, but like what sold you on the company, right? Because sometimes there's a difference. I, I know if this has happened to me where you're like, well, I really love this tool. And then the company maybe doesn't quite live up to that. Mm, yeah. So, so how did you find the like interview process? And like, what, what made you like, oh my gosh, I have to be a circle. You picked it up. It was the interview process. That's what drew, pulled me in. So at first, I had spoken to Victoria Can, who was our, which was leading the recruitment effort at the time, mm -hmm. wonderful recruiter. Yeah. And then I had interviewed with Eddie Webb. He was the manager of the solutions engineering team at the time. Mm -hmm. And my interview chain was Eddie Webb, Thomas Inox, who is the director of customer engineering right now. He's pretty person. okay. Wow, Teddy, you don't have a comment. He is the best. <laughs> so I had in there, had Eddie, I had Thomas, I had Aaron Gajewski, who's currently our manager of the SC team right now. I interviewed with Chris Black, Awesome Solutions Architect, and Vinny Tan. Oh, and also Rob Asherick. He was one of the product managers at the time, I think. But I interviewed with all of these people, and the feeling throughout that interview process was, if I had to sit next to you, for 10 hours a day for the next year, I wouldn't mind, you know? And that was for me a big deal. And so that was really what dropped, pulled me into CircleCI. It was the people. I like the product, but like you said, there are companies that build amazing product, but the culture within the companies are toxic. Here at CircleCI, when I went through that interview process, I really felt this, there was this feeling of I'd worked with the product, I'd really loved the product, and I was meeting the people, and I really loved them too. So it was just, you know, a no brainer for me. Yeah, I, I like that. I felt similar things. Like every time you interview, it's like, I mean, technical interviews or, or interviews in the tech industry are mm -hmm. massive, stressful mm -hmm. things. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so any time that you come out of one feeling good, like you had a good conversation, yeah. even even if like even in jobs that I haven't gotten, I've mm-hmm. still been like that's that's a good company because I still felt good about people I talked to there. Exactly. And I just had a conversation. So the SE team we're hiring a lot right now. The Circus CI as a whole, we're growing tremendously this year. We came out of 2020 was rough economically overall, but Circus CI as a company, we weathered it brilliantly and we're positioned with awesome momentum for 2021. And right now we're growing our revenue teams, we're growing our solutions engineering teams, we're growing our engineering teams everywhere across the con- company. We're pulling in new talent. And so for the solutions engineering team, that's one of the things we're doing now is with interviews I had this week, I had one candidate who at the end just said, hey, this felt like a conversation. This was the chillest interview I'd ever had. And I really made that point to them that this is a conversation about your future. We're not just here to squeeze you for, hey, can you write this code or can you push this thing in on time? We're having a conversation of, do you have professional development goals? Do you have skills and talents you're trying to apply? Do we have a role for you here? And so it really is this back and forth dialogue of you're having a conversation with me, you're interviewing me as a potential teammate, and I'm interviewing you as a potential teammate as well. So it really felt more of this idea of like a coffee date as opposed to a, I'm taking a legal deposition or something like that. Yes, I've been in interviews that felt like that. (laughs) Yeah, come on. I dressed up, I came here, I'm all smiley, and you're treating me like this? No. We're cool at saying, right, we keep the process friendly, fun, and interactive. Yeah, that was my experience too. And that was like, I was always like, uh, it, it's always a big part. Like, I mean, I have, I'm well, probably everyone in tech, we all are, yeah. and probably lots of other industries too. You have like one interview that like scars you, you know, <laughs> it like stays with you. You're like, that was yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> and the, I, the thing I liked about um, when I was interviewing at Circle was just that like, I was never, they never like left me hanging, you know, like I was like the recruiter, Casey was my recruiter. She's magnificent. And like, she was always checking in on me and letting me know like where people were at. And I think that like, that just made me feel like they cared. And then I started working here and I was like, oh, they do care. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a good point you brought up. I noticed that during the recruitment process at Circle CI, there are multiple touch points and you move through the process smoothly and quickly. Ironically, I started interviewing, I was interviewing with several companies at the time when I tried to join Circle CI, and Circle CI was one of the last ones I submitted an application for. However, with Circle CI, there's this cadence of once you complete the interview, you get feedback and response from human resources within a day or two. And so I actually moved through the Circle CI pipeline a lot quicker than these other companies that I started the interview process a lot sooner with, a lot earlier with. And so that's also part of the thing that makes it just comforting for you as an interview candidate. You, it's important to know where you are at the process. Interviews are a stressful part of your life as a professional. And just being left out there to hang by an HR department, not cool. And Circle CI will pay attention to that process. We move you through all of it with intentionality and mindfulness for yeah. points too as a candidate, you know? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right, well, okay, here's, here's what I wanna know, Sam. Okay, let's say I, or someone like me, or maybe you uh-huh. 15 years ago, and you say like, oh, I want to be a senior solutions engineer. Mm-hmm. Like, what was your path like to this point? Like, what does your career sort of look like? And do you think it was, um, was there like, I'm sure there are, there are many paths to like where we are obviously, but like, what does it, what did it look like for you to get here? So if you had asked me this question last week, my answer would be different. <laughs> what is different this week is I had a one-on-one with Ron Powell. He leads our, he does a lot of production of our technical content. He's been here for, I think, about two, over a little bit over two years now. And I'm ashamed that I had never talked to him up until this week. And so I started this way. I just reached out to him. He pinged me on LinkedIn first. And I thought, hey, we should probably get to know each other. So we met this week and we were t- chatting. And I learned from him that, is actually an astrophysicist. Yes. Just, uh, talking about amazing people at Circle CI, like he, we were having this one-on-one and I had this flashback to our company meeting when we introduced our largest cohort of new employees, just this week actually. Yeah. And everybody had this interesting fact about themselves. 
We had people who had literally saved lives, people who had been stunt doubles in movies. And to learn that Ron had been an astrophysicist, and here he was producing technical content and doing a lot of writing materials. And I asked him, how, like this exact same question, how did you get all the way from there into content production? And his answer changed the way I think about professional development. For me, up until this point, it had always been about picking up new technical qualifications, learning a new framework, learning how to program in a new language. Ron positioned it more as a forget about the technical qualifications you're building. It doesn't matter what your degrees are. The question you should be answering is, what skills do you bring to the table as a professional? What business value are you contributing to the team? Yeah. So if I take that step back now and I ask, so kind of rephrase this question of how do you get to the point of becoming a solutions engineer? The answer is whatever gets you two things. One, technical depth in any technology that you enjoy and that you're passionate about. And I say that passion is important because you cannot fake passion with customers. You get on the call and you're talking about a product you don't care about, customers pick up on that. So right. set yourself up for success, start with a product that you care about and learn to be technically deep in that. Secondly, learn to talk to people, learn to communicate, learn to empathize with, the, with them, the pain they're trying to solve and position your product as the solution for them. So take your product, understand what it does technically, mm -hmm. but that's not what's gonna make the customer happy. What makes the customer happy is the problem you're solving. So for me, if you take those two skills as what you're trying to accomplish, anybody can be a solutions engineer as long as you invest the time into building those skills. Now, if I take a step back and I talk about my own personal journey, yeah. a lot of pretty much becomes a I was heading in one direction that I thought I was going. And then I saw this interesting opportunity and I thought, hey, let me check it out. And so that's kind of how I got here. I was heading down into the more, let's just be full stack, in-depth software engineers. And I was preparing my career towards that. And mm -hmm. I got the opportunity to experiment with being customer facing. And that's how I ended up here as in the solutions engineering role. So that's how, in a nutshell, I'd say I got here. You know what? I think that's really amazing. One, talking to Ron is always an adventure. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> like galaxy brain, you know? Yeah. I'm always, and that's an astrophysics joke plus a Ron joke. Just oh, like Ron joke. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I really like that. It's, I, I also, I have kind of a non traditional background. I'm not like, mm -hmm. I wasn't an engineer for a really long time. Mm -hmm. I just showed up and was like, I think, I think I'm useful. And kind of made it happen. Yeah, and you actually have on a big point I want to pull out there, which is the non-traditional background. Yeah. I feel when I talk to people about coming to Secretary being engineers, they say, oh, I don't have an engineering college degree. We don't care about that at Secretary CI. Like I mentioned, we're talking about business value and what skills do you contribute. If you look at our hiring page and you see any job opening in there and you think, oh, I can fulfill those requirements. We don't care about your background. We don't care how you got there. Just prove to us that you have the skills to bring that value. And someone, we will talk to you about it. Yeah, I think that's really great. And yeah, I have, I, I have happened to have a college degree in, you know, literature, <laughs> which is fine. I mean, I enjoyed getting it, but it wasn't ever going to be my job. And I think that um, a lot of people are put off when it, you know, they think everyone else has that computer science degree or right. but it's just not true like right. most of the places i've worked it's been it's been maybe half and half mm -hmm. or even and now it's leaning towards fewer people with degrees mm, got it. and you know i think it's just like a non-traditional background in the same way that we're talking about it's really valuable right like you have this perspective mm. that kind of helps it helps understand like client problems like when you're customer facing right it, I just find that it's like, it's good to have all of these different perspectives to better right. understand these problems. I would definitely agree with that. Coming from having different backgrounds and ha having been exposed to different fields, different problem spaces, gives you a unique approach to solving or tackling any additional problem you get now or in the future. Yeah. That, yeah, it takes me back to, back when I was at Cypress, I was working as a data analyst with the business unit teams. Mm -hmm. And after about two years, I transitioned into the operations team. And one of the things that really set me up for success in the operations team was just knowing the kind of data tables that the business unit teams had access to. So 
just bring that up in the sense that having these different exposures, taking different projects, working on different problems, down the line, they end up contributing just to your ability to source multiple paradigms for tackling a particular problem. And so, yeah. yes, non-traditional backgrounds, definitely welcome here at Seco CI. Yeah. Well, so now you're solving another new problem, which is that uh, you and our friend Lakeisha are co-leading a new employee resource group called Onyx Circle, which is for our Black employees. That's right. That is not, yeah, I'll call that a fun project here at Circle CI. That is supporting our DEIB effort. Oh, I say DEIB as if everybody knows that. <laughs> DEIB here is an acronym for diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And it's an initiative that here at Circle CI we're driving to make everybody feel welcome. We understand that there's a lot of diversity and not just diversity in terms of race or in terms of how people identify, but in even something as, as simple as neurodiversity, how people process information. We have employee resource groups to try to address all of these different groups and to make sure that you feel welcome and supported at Circle CI. And yeah. so when Lakisha came up with this idea of starting up, a, we call it Onyx Circle here at Circle CI, I, I bought into that mission, like definitely, yes, let's build this community, let's build this group to show that Circle CI does support black people, black employees, and we have a group of allies. It's not just black employees in here. We have a group of allies around us who are showing us that they really do advocate for the cause, and this is an environment where we are welcome and wanted. And it's not just employees doing this. This is a company-level initiative. We have John Karlstrom, our VP of Man People, People manager? I don't know what we call him these days. But yeah, so he's driving this initiative at the company level. So we have a vice president level who owns this initiative. And he's not just the only person who's driving this. We have executive sponsors for all our employee resource groups. Yeah. So Onyx Circle, which I'm working with Lakisha on, for instance, we have Jane Kim, our chief, our vice president of revenue. She's the one who's sponsoring that for us. I had mentioned Circle Minds for neurodiversity. Yeah. We have Michael Stanky, our VP yeah. of Platform Engineering. He's going in that. Okay, call me out here. I'm going to start missing them. We also have Circle Shi, I believe Jen Kim is also sponsoring that. And awesome. Chitra, our CFO, is sponsoring yeah. that as well. I'm listening this out. Also, Quest Fair. We have an ARG yeah. for our LGBTQ community as well. And that is sponsored by, I'm dropping this one. Remind me, Katie. There's Thomas Enox. Thomas Enox. No way. Okay, I'm going to get some flack for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really want it. I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty, yeah, yeah, it's tough. So, Thomas, yeah, that sounds about right. Just talk, <laughs> you know, and so, all of this, I highlight all of this to say we don't just have one. This is not just our vice president of human resources who is running this initiative. This is not just a statement that our CEO puts out in a press release. This is an initiative that's driven by every high member executive in the company. And we have passionate employees who are stepping up to drive these groups as well. So I bring this up to say that I've been at companies where they'll put up motivational posters and they'll put up press releases and they'll say, yeah, we support diversity. And nothing changes internally for the comfort employees. That's not the experience here at Circle CI. It's part of the reason why I'm so passionate to be a part of the group. Part of the reason why I jumped behind Lakisha and said, yes, we're gonna make this work. is because I feel that at Circle CI, we, how, how do you say it? You talk the talk and you walk the walk, walk yes. the talk. Yeah, so we're really doing that at Circle CI and it makes it feel like a place where you feel like your efforts to foster the diversity actually make a difference. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a, that's a big part of it, right? With like any initiatives I've been part of in the past is like, if you're putting in effort and you don't see any change, then that's when you start to get really disheartened. Right. And you think like, maybe this isn't fixable, right? Um, yeah. But when you start to see people buying in and changing their behavior and really um, supporting you, that means like, maybe it's possible. Maybe we can just be better. <laughs> Exactly. And that's one of the things I worried about when we started it, uh, the Onyx Circle at Circle CI. Because I had been at other companies where, personally, I've gone through that transition where there's a public statement about supporting diversity, and I get excited, like, yay, this is coming. And then after two, three quarters, nothing happens, and then you just get jaded, and it just completely turns you off to corporate initiatives entirely. So when we got Circle CI and Lakisha said, hey, we're going to do this, and I've seen Circle CI as a place where we're actively living the mission that we're preaching. 
I jumped up and I said, definitely, I want to be a part of this to make sure that other employees who are coming in, they don't come in. If you're coming in from a company in the past where you've gone through this cycle of just inspiration and then being jaded and then being burnt out, I want to be here to let you know that CircleCI is not like that. We're making difference. We're actually making positive, actionable changes here. And so keep the hope up. We're making changes. So I, I asked Lakeisha this too, and I'm interested just to see what, what it looks like for you. If like in an ideal world, what does Onyx Circle do? Like, what do you, what's your, like, if you dream really big, yeah. like what do you want um, with and from Onyx Circle? Ah, uh, okay. So I will speak to two concrete initiatives that we're sponsoring this year. First of all, we're sponsoring a drive to educate more people just about black culture. Because one thing we're noticing or we're identifying as a divide for the misunderstanding be between cultures is just a lack of understanding or a lack of accurate, up-to-date information about lifestyles or culture or what it means to belong to that one culture. And yeah. so part of the way we're trying to change that, like Kisha and I, is by bringing up educational opportunities where we can, we have like fun outlets to teach people about black history and about contributions that black people have made to the, just to the world in general. And for that, for the Black History Month, for instance, we're doing this series of challenges. Today's gonna to be the first one. So if you're a Circus CI employee right now, keep an eye on the general channel in Slack. There's gonna be a crossword puzzle that's going to be posted with a lot of the clues are all going to be related to black history. And when that gets submitted, we're gonna enter all the sub entrance into a raffle for drawing to win prizes. So something like that gets people engaged, gets them, it's not just putting up a poster where you just walk past it, you ignore it, or like just forwarding trivia, but get people engaged in a fun manner. So they're learning, they're learning the information and they're retaining it because they're, they're enjoying it. Are you saying, Sam, that my Obama hope poster isn't enough? <laughs> if you have posted two posters, maybe, but one poster, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what we're talking about. It's more about just making it fun, right? Like get people engaged. If they're having fun, it's going to make it easier for them to want to learn the material. And so that's what we're trying to do on the education front. On the other side, we want to connect to just Black engineers and just Black employees or candidates who will feel people of talent, right, who can bring into Circle CI to contribute to our business and our and our mission and our goals overall. And so that's part of the other way we want to drive that is by doing things like hosting hackathons, for instance. We want to do a little bit more career fairs. We want to travel to more colleges, speak to these students, and invite them to apply to our talent pipeline and just give them a little bit more exposure to what we do at Circle CI. So those are the two things we're really trying to drive primarily for this year is the idea of educating people more about Black culture and then certainly connecting more to the Black professionals out there and building a bigger, a wider network. Yeah, I I think that's amazing, right? Sometimes we hear about the 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 pipeline problem, uh, yes. right? When you'll see companies saying like, "Well, no black candidates came through," right, right, right. Yep. And so, what do you what do you what would you say to people who say like, "Well, they're just there just isn't black talent to hire." I don't I don't know. Well, fortunately for us, we don't say that at Circle CI because we know there are steps we can take to fix that. For instance. Coming up next quarter, we're going to be planning a hackathon where we'll be inviting, well, it's going to be open to as many people will be interested in it. But a big part of that is we're going to be publicizing these hackathons at historically black colleges, for instance, or at coding academies that, spawn, that cater primarily to like minorities. And so it's more about making these channels available, going to where our, our demographics are and giving them the information they need. Because right now, if we only leave it on our hiring page, there's a little bit of a higher burden, a little obstacle that they have to yeah. offer to go find these resources. So what we're trying to do at Secosia is actively go out and be, like, take action to make those changes as opposed to waiting for them to come to us. I think that's so amazing. I, uh, I've, I've definitely given people some, some of my thoughts around like, there's oh, no oh, problem. <laughs> there's a you problem, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Like, if Black people aren't talking to you, that means you have a problem. <laughs> right. It tends to be one of those dicey conversations where we have to have, we have to approach it with a little bit of, a lot of mindfulness and tactfulness. But at the end of the day, I think the message is simply, if there's something that is not to the level, if there's, if you have metrics that you're not hitting, 
it's up to you to take the action to change that. If you have a culture that is not where you want it to be, it's up to you to take the action to change that. Don't wait for the change agents to come to you and change it for you. So that's kind yeah. of the, that's the mindset we take at Circle CI, and I feel that's why we're able to drive this actual tangible movement on these initiatives. Yeah, I think that's that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And I think um, one of the things is uh, that one, I'm very excited to do this crossword later. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Black History Month. So you're you're officially my first guest in Black History Month. So yeah. as I as I teased you beforehand, but now we're making Black History <laughs> with Sam. <laughs> Uh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got we've got a couple of questions in the chat here. One is just that. It, did you know Sam is an awesome dancer? Which I did. Who knows that? <laughs> Angel. Angel is in the chat. Oh, and, oh, goodness. <laughs> Our friend Angel. Oh, don't split all my secrets, Angel. Gotta <laughs> <out. laughs> it's good. It's good to be a secret good dancer. You can bust it out when people don't expect it. You know. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking one of these days I'm going to do a talk at one of these conferences and the intro is just going to be a dance number. So yes. <laughs> I have, I always want to, the walkout music, you know, like a professional wrestler or something. Oh, like I want like a, a full song. I want to like come out. Music, like, like yeah. fog machines, fireworks going up. No, the whole, no. the whole thing. <laughs> I, want, I want to attend that keynote, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure you can be front row. You'll be right by the pyrotechnics. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, also, question: Can you share what what kind of technical work you're currently working on? What are you excited about? Ah, awesome! So, what am I excited about? The technical work I'm kind of doing right now for professional development is really geared towards helping support customers as Circle CI rolls out a new feature of suite of products. I say that when when I say that I'm thinking specifically of our Server 3.0 product, which is currently in preview. We're pushing to go GA, general availability, next month. And what that brings to the table, yeah, get excited, people. What that brings to the table is the ability to deploy our platform, so all the wonderful things you get in our cloud, so the scaling, the parallelism, the concurrency, the intuitive user interface, you can get all of that in an on-prem version that you can run behind your own network, except in this case, you can deploy it on Kubernetes, and that's Kubernetes anywhere. You can do Kubernetes on GKE, on EKS, or if you have your own bare metal servers, you can deploy it on there as well. And this really empowers you. For people, oh my gosh, uh, uh, are, can I just say, really excited are deploying Kubernetes on bare metal. Yeah. Are you excited yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so this is going general availability next month. And this essentially, the fact that it's deploying on Kubernetes allows you, just gives you flexibility in your scaling options. So that makes you just robust and more infinitely, infinitely scalable. So that's what I'm getting excited for. And in order to prepare for that, I've been taking this course on Pluralsight. It's a Kubernetes administration and development course. And mm -hmm. that's one thing I wanted to throw in there. We talked about professional development earlier. At Circle CI, we have a budget for professional development. And we have a suite of learning tools. We have Pluralsight and Udemy for Business as well that we have access to. And can go on there and learn anything you want. So and that's you were like, I gotta be a K eight admin. I oh, gotta cool. the Kubernetes wizard coming right here. That's what we're <laughs> paying for. That's how we delight the customers, right? Once we know it allows us just to learn, like we were talking about being able to integrate with multiple platforms, different technologies. The more as employees that we're familiar with these technologies, the more delight and pleasure we can deliver to our customers. Yeah. yeah. So Am I like when we uh, start moving towards something like 3.0? Mm -hmm. Is it driven by what you hear from customers? Like, are people saying like, "Man, I really wish that I could, you know, deploy this on my own network, not in that, not in that dang cloud." <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a mix to it. So there's a side where we're reacting to demand from enterprise customers. And it's a side where it's us looking out into the future and making these strategic decisions based on where we see the landscape evolving to. And so it's us really trying to balance the needs of, we know there's 
There's a set of customers right now who are craving, they are more DevOps forward and they are craving this platform that allows them to deploy and have control over it. But at the mm -hmm. same time, they want something that's a little bit more polished than more of the legacy open source platforms that are there. And so having Circle CI and being able to run that within their own network on the platform like Kubernetes that gives them robustness and ease of scaling, that's something that's really, really, really attractive to them for right now. Also, we see on-prem, the need for on-prem de deployments moving towards that paradigm in the future as a whole for the industry as well. And Circle CI as a leader in the CI-CD space is just, that's our deal. We are always ahead of the trends, jumping in there and implementing those features before the developers even know they need it. Yeah, I was um, like a lot of developers in the DevOps space, right? When Kubernetes was taking off, yeah. I had no idea what it was, but I had heard it so many times. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the first things I had to do was, um, go kind of like man a booth at KubeCon. Oh yeah, wow. And I was so nervous. I oh, was yeah. like, oh my gosh, people are gonna ask me questions. I have no idea how this works. Oh, and wow. then I figured out this really magical thing at the time, which was that I could just say a uh, sidecar and then people would believe me. And I would be like, oh yeah, you can put that in a sidecar. <laughs> <laughs> wow, kitty. <laughs> Because at the time, I was like, I was so nervous to be discovered, you know, that like I didn't know anything. And then it turns out nobody else knew anything either. Oh, Katie, let me learn, let you into this secret. I just learned this week as well. Have you heard of the Let's, Let's Talk Engineering channel that we have? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Jacqueline Garcia, one of our software engineers here, she runs this program. I think it's once a week or every two weeks where it's just, it's an open forum where anybody, the whole company is invited, you jump in and you can talk about any engineering topic you want. So it's just everyone sharing their ideas, their feelings and their experiences on that topic. The last one they did was on the topic of mentorship. And in response to that, Tad Whitaker, one of our, our managers in the security engineering, he had shared this perspective that I found very interesting. And it was in relation to imposter syndrome. And he had said for him, he had, change the paradigm around imposter syndrome to not be about being afraid of not knowing enough or pretending like you're in the wrong place or in the wrong room and remapping that reframing that more as a beginner's mindset the whole idea is like this concept you borrow from zen philosophy of coming into the conversation with a blank slate with an open mind and just willing to absorb information as opposed to hanging on to the knowledge or the experience that you think you're bringing in to the interaction and so seeing that for me, I think it's it's been this change in when I approach conversations with customers where they throw out ideas, for instance, like let's take, for instance, when I was talking to Ram, there was so much he was talking about in terms of the space physics that I didn't understand, that I didn't know. Going into that conversation, I might have been intimidated saying, okay, this guy's gonna talk and I'm not gonna get anything he's gonna say, right? But I went in with the idea of, I am going in to learn more about what he's doing. So that completely drops that nervousness and that anxiety about what I didn't know. And it makes me open instead to celebrate the things I didn't know as an invitation to learn more and fix those for a future conversation. Yeah, I think that's amazing. That's, I, that is generally how I like to do it. I like to tell everyone like, look, if you can get me to understand it, then you you really like you know your stuff and exactly. i love talking to people about what they're excited about you know yeah. like you talk to ron about astrophysics and suddenly you're excited about astrophysics I know, right <laughs> i yeah. talk to you and i'm like maybe i could i could master kubernetes yeah uh, let's do oh, yeah. it you know yeah, yeah we've got a plural site course that's very good on it so definitely check it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really love that i think um it's nice to have a budget to always be learning. And I think also it's just really, it's really nice to know that like you're never punished for not knowing, you know? Mm, yes, yes, definitely. So what do you think like in your role, what, is, what does success look like? Like, what does it mean to be like a successful, mm -hmm. like, you know, kind of like so supporting all of these customers and getting them set up? Like, how do you know you're doing a good job? Ah, it's a great question. And it's one I've been thinking about a lot lately, given where we are as a company in our trajectory and the momentum we're coming into this year for. I've been thinking about it from the perspective of, we have a lot of new people joining the company now. 
And as a company to efficiently harness that talent, we need to quickly onboard them, get them trained, equip them with the right tool and the knowledge to become productive right away. Yeah. So for me, as one of the senior members of the team, I have, I'm actually going to be talking with Chris Black, which is our solutions architect. And we're going to be trying to talk about this framework of how do we craft effective and efficient onboarding for our new engineers coming in. And I feel for everybody who is a senior member of teams across the company right now, that should be an important metric of how you measure success in the next two to three quarters, is that as new people are joining your team, what are you doing to empower them, to enable them to ramp up quickly and to feel welcome? So that's something I've been thinking a lot about lately, and we're gonna be talking to a lot of the other leaders in the solutions engineering team to make sure we craft this environment that we're training people to get up and running where they feel comfortable with our product, where they feel comfortable talking to our customers, and where they feel welcome as well, where they feel like they're being welcomed into the community. So that for me, I think would be a key metric of how I'm gonna measure success this year. I think that uh, is is really wonderful and makes you like a really good senior member of the team. I've <laughs> it's one of the things that I definitely look for in teammates who I know have more experience than me. I'm like, does right. is this person invested in my success? Right, right, right. And that really that will really, it changes it encourages people actually to contribute more to the team. When you show up and you feel like everyone's trying to make you do your help you do your best work, it really inspires you to contribute your best work back into the community. So yeah, we're trying to leverage that and make sure it's something that encourages everyone to just, you know, have fun at work and make sure that you're really doing the best work that, that you can do again. Yeah, I like that. And one of the things I, I talked with Lakeisha about a little bit is um, when it comes to black history, we right. tend to focus on people from a pretty long time ago, right? We tend to be like, oh, you know, uh, George Washington Carver in the United States. And right. like we tend yeah. to go really far back in history. But mm -hmm. is there anyone recent living? Is there like, do you have an idol who you think like that person, they're making black history right now? I mean, outside of you. <laughs> <laughs> outside of me. You can't be your own idol. <laughs> I'm gonna sit on this one and go with my parents. And I go with that because when we left, we left Nigeria at a time when Nigeria was transitioning from a dictatorship into a democracy, and there was a lot of economic uncertainty at the time. My parents were, they were set, like they had their own house, they had real estate property, but for them, it wasn't so much about the present, it was about the future, like making sure that for me and my sisters, we had some place where we were safe and where we felt like we could really just settle in and do, just live a good life, right? Yeah. And so for them, seeing them sacrifice everything they had in Nigeria to come and start afresh in America. And essentially realizing and looking back, I do a lot of reflection on that time and realizing that that would have been very difficult for adults who don't speak English as a first language in a country where they're moving their entire livelihood and their entire family into. So for me, I see that as it's historical in the sense that a lot of the disparity, a lot of the inequity that we talk about between races today is not something that you can fix by going back last week and asking, what did that guy do last week that he could have done differently? We're talking about changes that happened decades ago. Like, what access did they have to primary education? How much time, quiet time, do they have at home to do their homework? It's small, simple things like this that set you up as a professional 20, 30 years down the line. Yes. And so thinking about this now, and trying to ask myself, like, what makes me feel like I am able to stand up and advocate for equal rights as among my peers today? And it's having access to that education, having parents who sacrificed their own life and their own livelihood in order to make sure that I had access to be able to set myself up in the future and actually have a decent living. That, to me, is Black history in the making today. It's parents who are sacrificing to make sure their children have a chance at a better life. I think that's like, that's really beautiful. I'm not feeling teary even a little bit. I think that's really beautiful because, um, you know, a lot of parents who make sacrifices for their kid, they, they trust that it's for the best, right? And the same way that you invest in your team members' success, they invested in you. And I think that like, that's a really beautiful definition of like black history because it's not about who shows up in headlines. It's not about, you know, like 
the one person we all know about because you know we are like in america especially like we're we're just like if it's not mlk we're like not interested right we're like i'm sorry but i read um like the letter from the birmingham jail by martin luther king so i'm an expert but it's the everyday life of black folks who are making hard decisions and bringing joy and success to everyone around and their families and communities. And I think you're absolutely right, Sam. I knew we were gonna make black history here with you. <laughs> exactly. It's about, yeah, it's like we said, yeah, it's like CI, it's about taking all of those, those little actions, right? That drive tangible change. We can always speak about the grand ideas and look back and try to hang our laurels and just relax on the, on the work that great people have done in the past. However, what's making difference for people today are the little things that individuals are doing. As a company, as Circle CI, if you're going out to a historically black college and giving yourself, making yourself accessible to people who are passionate, who are working hard, who are trying to get a better life, who are trying to actually apply their talent and all they need is an opportunity to prove themselves, that is taking that small action. That is making black history. That is making the difference that's going to end up giving you this incremental benefit, it just snowballs into future rewards and future returns on that investment. So yeah, Black history ends up, we end up focusing on the grand ideas. But here at Circle CI, we're taking those little steps that actually drive the tangible changes. Yeah, and I honestly, like, just as an individual within this company, I just can't thank you enough for being willing to take up um, and, and stand up for blackness and be proud of your blackness and spread the black joy that Lakeisha is always talking about. It's an absolute privilege and to be around and to be able to, to support. So thank you. Thank you. It's been a delight being here. And it's a, it's been a pleasure to be a member of the Circle CI community and to, to share my passion and my energy with everyone. Yeah. Do you have any... Um, if you could give people one one piece of advice, whether it's about engineering or yeah. or otherwise, what would you what would you say? Haha. <laughs> well, I think I've done enough soapboxing and opinionating <laughs> and advising for now. What I will like to leave you all with, in case you haven't picked up on it yet, is get excited. Circle CI is doing big things both internally for employees and externally for customers. So Definitely, if you're looking to join the team, reach out to a recruiter, reach out to me. I'm out on, well, I don't have social media, but if you can find me on LinkedIn, Sam Olukotun, Circle CI, reach out to me. I'll get you in touch with the right people, but everybody get excited at Circle CI. We're doing great things internally and externally as well. I mean, I can't say it any better. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure. All right. Bye, everyone.